The Old Testament Models for Spiritual Leadership In the Old Testament, God teaches about leadership, mainly through the models of leadership. People like Moses, Joshua, and the kings provide us with role models that help us understand what it means to be a leader of God's people today. Moses was the first person to be called in the Old Testament a spiritual leader. Prior to Moses, we see family or tribal leaders. Adam was a father of us all, but he was, he was a one-of-a-kind situation. The same can be true of Noah. We are not shown anything of his leadership abilities, only that he obeyed God in building the ark. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were leaders of families and tribes, but they did not have to be accepted as leaders. Joseph showed leadership, but only in the unbelieving state of Egypt. Moses is the first designated leader of God's people to, of Israel to assume the role solely by the gifting and calling of God. God's preparation for Moses was a unique preparation, however. First of all, he had a unique family. Moses was from a priestly family. He was given up by the adoption to Pharaoh's daughter, which put him at the center of the Egyptian royal family and gave him special advantages. He had a unique protection from Pharaoh. His royal position meant that no one could strike him down. He had a unique education from Pharaoh. He had the finest education possible at that time. He had unique failures as well. Moses' failures, failures were as much a part of his preparation as his successes. His exile from Egypt and 40 years in the desert were a unique preparation for his life and work. He had a unique experience with the awe of God. God made only one burning bush, and that was to speak to Moses. No one else could have fulfilled all that was necessary for ministry except him. Ministry is not something that we enter into alone. But we have to be prepared by the unique calling of God and by the circumstances of our lives. Moses was not Israel's shepherd. God is Israel's shepherd. We must never make the mistake of thinking that we are a shepherd of God's people, that we are un anything but under shepherds. We are not shepherds. We are under shepherds. When God leads his people through Moses, he did it directly by telling Moses exactly what to do and say. There was a change in leadership under the style under Joshua. That is, that God had a different way of leading through Joshua than he did through Moses. For one thing, he did fewer direct miracles. At the beginning of Joshua's time as leader, God did a great many miracles. For example, the parting of the Jordan River and the, the destruction of Jericho. But as time went on, God more and more came to rely upon Joshua to make his own plans. And there were a few divine interventions by the time Joshua finished his leadership. There were no plagues to empty the land or manna to fill the stomach. Instead, God expected the people to work and fight for themselves. Joshua was expected to plan for himself. Joshua made plans that God's people carried out. Joshua was expected to fight for himself. God promised them victory, but Joshua had to do the battle. It was no longer an automatic action of God. Joshua had to, it had to also work along with God. Joshua was expected to train for leadership. God trained Joshua through Moses before he sent him out. We can no longer expect God to send us out before we are trained. God expects us to go through periods of training. Judges displayed another change in God's relationship with the leader after Joshua died. The judges provided temporary leadership under a fallible people such as Samson and Samuel. Leadership under these people did not last forever. God did, expect, did not expect the tribal leaders to have hereditary leaders at this point. Instead, he expected the tribal leaders to take over and do their job. When they did not do their job, then God would raise up judges that would help the people through particular situations. The leadership of the judges was a circumstantial leadership. God used particular judges for particular times and places. They were not often good leaders for all the people, but simply were called up for particular times. God divided leadership among many different kinds of leaders in the Old Testament. There were kings, priests, prophets, and scribes.
The priests were the first to come along. The priests were instituted by God in the time of Moses. Like the kings, they were a hereditary order. They were responsible for presenting the spiritual legacy of the sacrifices and the worships and the laws of God to the people. They maintained spiritual order in the community of faith. The continuation of the priestly rituals brought comfort to the people, separating them from the world, and it also meant that their, their comfort was not from an individual personality, but from a continuation of ritual that maintained through the years. Priests led the people, but they did not stand in for God. Only God could bless the people. A priest is an intermediary between God and his people. They do not stand in for God, but they do stand for God. Prophets came next. The first person to be called prophet by name was Samuel, who was also the last judge. Prophets were not one caste or one group, but were raised up from anyone whom God chose. Anybody, man or woman or child, could be a prophet. A prophet does not foretell the future, but, it for, but a prophet foretells God's word for today. The word prophet, both in Greek and in Hebrew, means a mouthpiece. All a prophet was was a mouthpiece for God to direct them through a particular time or place. Prophets were not always the lonely men in the wilderness that we imagine they are. Sometimes there were colonies of prophets that lived together, as well as prophets that lived in the temple and in the king's court. Sometimes the prophets were people who were very well connected. Other times there were people who showed up out of nowhere. Sometimes prophets were not called to succeed, but to fail. Jeremiah, for example, was called to preach. But he was forewarned that few people would listen and that Israel would not heed, and that was the case. Nevertheless, they spoke for God. Prophets were not necessarily managers or leaders, but they were people who spoke the truth. The kings were called by God and chosen at the end of the judges period. Samuel was the one who anointed the first kings of Israel. They exemplified the authority of God over worldly matters. They unified and directed the people in politics and in, in economics and other ways. They were a hereditary group caste like the priest. You couldn't just decide to be a king. You had to be born to be one. The kings were fallible and sometimes even evil. Even good kings like David and Solomon made serious and terrible mistakes and the people suffered for it. Because of the corruption of worldly power, kings often became insensitive to people's needs. When this happened, God punished them and punished the people as well. The scribes came last. They emerged mainly in the last part of Israel's history after the Babylonian captivity. These were the teachers of the word of God. The scribes had no authority of their own. Their one function was to present and study the word of God. The scribes provided spiritual education, which made all other spiritual ministries possible. They prepared the mind as well as the spirit to worship God. Leadership in the Old Testament is not absolute, but it was distributed among many fallible people. Today, leaders are not infallible either. We must constantly see God's will in order to fulfill what God commands and listen to others.